Welcome back to Mock the Mock, where we take a look at someone else's mock draft. And I'm mocking, giving you my views, thoughts, and opinions. Couldn't find my Dolphins hat. Got my Dolphins beanie. Gotta support my new man. I got a new man in Mike McDaniel. But we're going to take a look at Jordan Reed's mock draft. It's a two-rounder, so it's going to be it's going to be a hoot. Jordan Reed, if you don't know who he is, uh, he typically, he's been riding off and on for ESPN. I don't know if he's actually with ESPN now, but uh he mainly writes for the draft network great content one of the, uh just a great evaluator in general too uh very entertaining personality as well but i love to see his perspective on the draft but what's crack lacking it's your boy Baroshmo, just in case you did not know so go ahead become a bro and subscribe leave that thumbs up if you enjoy the content as always let me know what you think in the comment section below we're gonna have a walk the mock sometime this week I've set my heart on it. I'm thinking maybe Friday Friday or Thursday. Probably sounds like the best option. Um, you'll see it uh, whenever you come on the channel. You'll, you'll see like, hey, we got a live stream coming up. Uh, also, it's going to be a lot of Mock the Mocks this week. Just because I'm getting together all my notes uh, from th this past week's bowls. And I'm reorganizing my rankings, my big board and such. So... Hang with me with that. That hopefully start. It's going to start next week, guaranteed. I'm hoping maybe to get it started this weekend, though. But let's go ahead. Let's dive into this sucker. Let's see what he has for the Jacksonville Jaguars. It's Evan Neal. It's a man after my own heart. Evan Neal, my boy. Uh, Yeah, it makes sense. I've talked about it in the past. Listen, they don't like Jawan Taylor. You're hoping he takes that step in year four, that next step. Uh, and you really don't know exactly what you have with Walker Little, but go ahead and get a guy like Evan Neal to sure up one of those sides, uh, especially with Cam Robinson being a free agent. Oh, man, my nose has been running so hard. That's how you know spring's coming because the allergies come with it. Detroit Lions go KT, a little bit different. No Aiden Hutchinson, no uh, hometown boy in this instance, which I got no problem with. Hey, I've been saying Hutch and KT, they're 1A, 1B. So listen, whoever's higher on your board, who you think better fits your system, go for it. He does talk about Hutchison's got the more polished, but we, we know that r the raw upside of Thibodeau is going to be hard to ignore. Before we get into the rest of this video, if you haven't checked it out, man, I've been, I've been flashing my, well, I haven't been flashing. That would be a crap. But I've been flashing my uh, jersey I got from Team Jersey Pros or Team Jerseys Pro. Team Jerseys Pro. Why is that such a tongue twister for me? My gosh. But you could get 10% off if you want to get a custom made jersey. Mine was legit awesome. I got a baseball jersey in the style of the Mets with Bro Schmo. They put my logo up on the sleeve. It was stitched in, it was beautiful. But you can get 10% off your custom jersey if you use promo code Bro Schmo, all caps, by the way. But yeah, thank you for sponsoring this video. Aiden Hutchinson going to the Texans. Kind of a no-brainer. Best player available. That's what the Texans are doing. Do we really need to go into it more in depth? I don't think so. We got 64 picks to go through. Uh, Ikem Ikwanu going to the Jets. Uh, we know that Joe Douglas, he loves the trenches. He's probably going to love Ikwanu. Um, Ikwanu has been featured as a first overall pick on a few of these mocks. One we'll get through this week because uh, there have been it's post senior ball. Everyone and their moms coming out with mock drafts, but yeah, it doesn't surprise me. Uh, even if they do bring George Fant, uh, even if they decide, hey uh, George Fant, you know you, you're still on the roster. We're probably not going to extend you. The word is that they may extend him. We know we got Makai Becton, but hey, hey, hey Ikwanu come in here compete. Worst case scenario, bam, slide in right guard until Fant gets out of here. And then the Giants, they go Charles Cross. I've seen people say Charles Cross is in a top uh, 10 player in this draft. I disagree, uh, especially being a Zion Nelson truther that, yeah, Cross, uh, Cross is a very similar prospect, and he actually had the trajectory while Zion Nelson this year kind of plateaued. That's why he didn't come out in this class. But, yeah, the G-men, their offensive line sucks, makes sense. 
Carolina Panthers, if we're not doing trades, I think this makes all the sense of the world. Like, honestly, Carolina, it, this is a tough predicament the Panthers find themselves in. What are they going to do? Can they, uh, can they find a suitor to trade down? Perhaps. Or maybe they just go ahead and take their franchise quarterback. And Malik Willis was by far probably uh, the guy that shined the most at the Senior Bowl in terms of tools, athletic upside. Uh, he might not be ready from like the get-go, but it's a good thing they got Sam Darnold on that fifth year, huh? All right, let's keep this sucker going with the Giants' next pick. Kyle Hamilton makes a ton of sense. Best, He's the best player left on the board. Uh, you feel better about the safety value at seven here. And, yeah, no, that's, that's legit. That's awesome. That's great. Uh, I have seen people talk about corner at this position because – Bradbury, his contract does get real expensive uh, either this season or next season. So that could be something to watch out for. Atlanta Falcons, though, they'll go corner. They'll go Derek Stanley. Look, look, Jordan Reed still believes in Derek Stanley. Why am I not allowed to say, hey, Derek Stanley, I'm waiting to hear how the ankle checks out. But nah, people get all pissy when I'm mock Derek Stanley wherever. That's not necessarily true, but that's how I feel. But uh, no, yeah, Paranoia with AJ Terrell. You might not necessarily get a guy that could be a for sure like elite pass rusher right off the bat, but getting a guy like, with Derek Stanley's like his tools, the length, the athleticism, the ball hawking, the ball skills uh, to play quarterback two to AJ Terrell, who was arguably might be might have been probably was the best corner of football last year. Don't know why you weren't at the Pro Bowl, man. What happened? It's like the Pro Bowl, like no one actually cares about it. But yeah, no, I like this pick. I like the idea of the Falcons going uh, corner a bit more than pass rusher right now. But also with how deep this pass rushing class is, you could get a guy like that in the second round. Denver Broncos, uh, they keep this pick. I've been just giving it, giving them Aaron Rodgers because. Uh, I don't know. I feel like that's just the favorite right now for Aaron Rodgers if he leaves Green Bay. But they go Devin Lloyd. It's no secret. Look at all these free age, these free agent linebackers they have. A Alexander Johnson, who I think will be back. Josie Jewell, Kenny Young. I don't think those guys will be back. So adding Devin Lloyd makes all the sense in the world. Here at nine, it feels a bit, you know, when quarterback is such a huge need, but, you know, the, the value is just not there. Like, Maybe you'd be willing to go Malik Willis with this pick, which is a curious, is a question I wish I could ask Jordan Reed. You know, I could, I should tweet him, but uh, I wish I could ask him, would he go Malik Willis with Denver? I'm curious. I'm curious, but I do think that Denver they'll be active in the quarterback uh, trade market. Then the New York Jets they go Garrett Wilson. Listen, listen, Jets fans. Ever since I said it in my mock, but didn't do it. I love the idea of Traylon Burks. People want to compare him to Debo. Cool. That's all fine and dandy. But with LaFleur's there, dude, oh, to get a guy that could cut, that maybe potentially could be your Debo, oh, that's kind of sexy. Uh, I, I want my Drake London, but grabbing a very complete receiver in Garrett Wilson, no problem. Kenny Pickett going to the commanders. Everyone, get your comrades out. That's right. Wave your comrades. Use it to wipe off whatever fluids you need or see fit. How y'all bring terrible towels and call them comrades? Oh, I gotta blow my nose. Excuse me, I'm gonna blow into my comrade real quick. Oh, woo! It's a little stinky. But uh, I think they have to go quarterback with this pick. I don't think Kenny Pickett's it. For me, Kenny Pickett's probably out of the first round. As you see here, took a massive leap in 2021. Everyone wants to make the comparison to Joe Burrow. Joe Burrow had the nine-inch hands, which is like the bare minimum. The only guy that in the modern era that has started in the NFL with sub-nine-inch hands, Michael Vick, Kenny Pickett, he ain't no Michael Vick. Just going to say that. Uh, Kenny Pickett's arm strength, a bit questionable. You'd be like, well, so is Joe, Joe Burrow's. Joe Burrow's pinpoint accuracy, anticipation, Far exceeds what we've seen, what we saw at the Senior Bowl from Pickett. Um, and you'd be like, well, Joe Burrow is a one year wonder. The big difference was we saw two and a half years of mediocre play from Kenny Pickett opposed to Joe Burrow being 
stuffed on a very stacked bench there at Ohio State before transferring. So there's differences. There are clear differences. Uh, but I think I, I probably would go quarterback as well. Uh, let's keep it going. Minnesota Vikings, David Ajabo. So, yeah, I mean, I, I get I get it from, like, uh, getting someone next to uh, Daniel Hunter. It makes all the sense in the world. But uh, that cornerback room is a lot more thin than I would say the pass rushing room. Because at least they got a few guys. Uh, David Ajabo, too, is a bit of a work in progress. So... Does this feel a bit more like a a potential rebuild? Perhaps. I don't think it's like a mini rebuild, but you do got to get younger on defense. I think this pick is used for defense, but it wouldn't surprise me if it went the other way with um uh them hiring the uh was he the quarterback's coach or was he the OC for the Rams? I can't remember. Uh, Cleveland Browns, they go Traylon Burks. Look, if I'm taking him at 13, I'm taking him at 10. But Traylon Burks, if he if he tests out as anticipated, then holy schmoly, watch out. Get Baker a weapon. We all know, hey, Baker, are you the franchise quarterback or not? We all know we ask him that question. You got the fifth-year option. This is your last year to prove it. Give him no excuse. Give him the weapons. Everyone's putting a receiver here for the Browns. Trevor Pettin going to the Baltimore Ravens. I didn't include Trevor Pettin in my uh, first round because I thought, uh, I mean, I know the, I think he he probably goes in the first round if we're going if I'm going to project it, simply because of the NFL is going to love his mentality. He was one of the most highly uh, penalized offensive linemen in FCS in the FCS, and on top of that, he lost a lot at the Senior Bowl. Like the dude's raw. You can't start this cat. On an NFL field tomorrow, I think it would be, you would be jeopardizing. I mean, hey, I mean, it makes a little bit of difference when you got Lamar Jackson who can escape pressure like that, but I don't know. Uh, Jermaine Johnson, I made this pick in my mock for the Eagles, so yeah, I'm totally for it. They get a pro-ready edge, and then they pair that up with a mod. Sauce Gardner. They lost in the sauce. I say the Eagles. Y'all lost in the sauce. This is a great pick. This is a great pick. Grab some competition. I know you got, uh, what was it, Zach McPhere, is it McPherson, who they drafted last year. And then they also traded for Tate Gowan uh, to kind of compete for that outside job. Just grab more competition. Corner is like the most important position on an NFL, on like an NFL defense, in my opinion. Uh, Jordan Davis. I'm curious. Does he? I want to know. Do, do you? Do you, Jordan Davis? Do you just say, "Hey, chalk this one in," because everyone and their mom is chalking this one in. Jordan Davis. The run defense sucks. Okay, Jordan Davis. Like uh, a lot will be made of whether Davis can be a three-down player. Precisely. Uh, but yeah, like it's not a bad pick. It's not a sexy pick. It's a pick. Uh, let's see what the Saints. Matt Corral. So, um, I I've come to like I've come to appreciate Matt Corral a bit more after watching the Senior Bowl and being a bit underwhelmed <laughs> by the quarterback play. Maybe I was a bit hard on Matt Corral, but I do have my reservations. Of I don't think he could start tomorrow. He's he seems like a product of a very RPO heavy offense there at Ole Miss, led by Lane. Kiffin, they were in the top five of screens and uh, what was it? Screens and uh, play actions, which they they use the run game to kind of like to kind of like deceive the defense and make it ma basically make easier throws for your quarterback. He he's got the escapability, but having to go off his first read, he doesn't like that. So, yeah, Matt Corral, if you're taking him, I don't think you're taking him to start immediately. Which then again, I mean, you, that could echo to, like, the days of old where it was like, you're going you're, you're gonna to sit for two years, and then, and then you'll start. I think Aaron Rodgers may have been the last guy that they did that, but that was like overdrive. What, Aaron Rodgers didn't start the first three seasons or something? Uh, I know they did that with Carson Palmer. 
back in the John Kitna days. Uh, Linderbaum falling here to 19. Linderbaum's going to be interesting. Everyone has him projected going um, everywhere. <laughs> Uh, from as low as I saw to the Titans to as high as I've been mocking them at seven to the Giants. But fantastic pick, especially even if they bring Jason Kelsey back. Uh, but here he, he mentions Jason Kelsey, who may retire, may or may not. But having him as your center of the future, that's that's legit. That's not bad. Uh, Sam Howe going to the Steelers. Some of y'all think I got a Sam Howe bias. I know I'm just giving y'all my opinions. Y'all just disagree with it. Some of y'all, I said some of y'all, not all y'all calm down, but Pittsburgh feels like they need to go quarterback at some point. Excuse me. I got to blow into my terrible towel. Oh man, that smells a lot better than my comrade, but yeah, it feels like whether it's, I don't think they're in the trade market for a quarterback, but it does feel like they probably go quarterback with this pick. I think I had Ritter slotted in here. On to the Patriots. Hey, J.C. Jackson, he's a free agent. Even if you bring him back, there ain't nothing wrong with quarterback depth. Andrew Booth, for a lot of people, ranges from their top corner to quarterback. Like, I think I have him quarterback four currently. Uh, then again, I am going, re -going, like, going through my position rankings as we speak. Uh, Drake London making it all the way to the Raiders. I think, yeah, there's a good chance Drake London could fall. I mean, the NFL is going to love his size, love just that prototypical X build. They're going to love his catch radius. But uh, depending on how things check out with the ankle, he could slide. And he'd be a good, he'd be a good weapon for a Derek Carr. So, yeah. Look at that. Mel Kuyper. He's a legend. Kenyon Green going to Arizona Cardinals here. He projects best at guard, which may or may not be the truth. I, w I want him to have a shot at tackle. But, yeah, no, grabbing him at guard is not a bad – like, honestly, this is great value. I, I'd be willing to take Kenyon Green in the top 20. A uh, guy with tons of positional versatility. We know um, – he put up a banger year at left guard in 2020. We know he could play right guard, right tackle, left tackle. Apparently, he's played some center, too. Uh, I haven't seen it, but apparently. So, no, Cardinals get a solid pick here. Dallas Cowboys, what are you going to do for the Cowboys? Nicobe Dean, forgot you were on the board, Nicobe Dean. It's going to be interesting how this uh, linebacker class falls out because there's a lot of good linebackers. A lot. A lot of good linebackers. So maybe you'd be like, ah, maybe we see a guy like Dean who should be top 20 fall a little bit because, well, it's just, it's actually a pretty good linebacker class. <laughs> But this would be good, man. This will allow you to use Micah Parsons, similar to how they used him this year. They got, uh, we got uh, Liam Eichen, or not Eichenberg. Uh, uh, you got Van Der Esch. I'm just going to say Van Der Esch. Uh, he's a free agent, I think. Oh, my gosh. Oh, who, who used to play at Atlanta at safety. They moved him to linebacker. I think he's a free agent. I can't remember his name for the life of me. Buffalo Bills, Travon Walker. Why are you still addressing the edge? I get it. Jerry Hughes, free agent. I get it. Mario Addison, free agent. Not sold on AJ Epinesa. You kind of curious. Boogie Basham, we thought you were more pro ready than Gregory Rousseau, though he looked better his rookie year. So perhaps, I mean, I, I, I don't know. I would I would dip into the the corner class with Levi Wallace being a free agent. I don't want to leave that like cornerback two spot up to Dane Jackson. That's my opinion. Uh, maybe even go like I don't know. You got you got Chris Olave here. That could be a sexy pick for some people. Tennessee Titans, Chris Olave. Actually, speak of the devil. Uh, yeah, no, getting that guy that could separate vertically, I think, would be huge with guys like AJ Brown and Julio Jones. I think that'd be a phenomenal pick. It would really help Tannehill maybe regain that 2020 and 2019 form. Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Trent McDuffie. I'm a lot higher on Trent. Personally, I think he could go top 20. The guy is going to test out great. Maybe there's some reservations about his size uh, and his length. But, yeah, Carlton Davis set to be a free agent. You got Jamal Dean and 
Sean Murphy Bunnett enter the final years of their contract. So going to the corner position, going to the corner well makes all the sense. And it's great value. George Karloftis, forgot you were in this draft. How you doing, bud? Go into the Packers. This is nice. I mean, it'd be cool to get another wide receiver, but getting Karloftis is fine. I mean, a guy that uh, you got both the Smith brothers. They're not related, but they both have the last name Smith. Therefore, they are brothers. Uh, they're probably not going to be with the squad next year. So, George Karloftis, great value. What do you do for my Dolphins? Logan Hall. Every one of their mom apparently is high on Logan Hall. Listen. Listen. I mean, since Payne and Turner snuck into the first round, there's a good chance Logan Hall could do that as well. He looked good this week at the Senior Bowl. And he is a tweener for all intents and purposes. Uh, the Dolphins could take him. I'd rather take maybe a Jameson Williams who's still on the board, George Pickens. Uh, I think those those are the I think those are the only two guys I'd be willing to take at that spot at receiver. Like you could throw Jahan Dotson, but I prefer not uh, for the Dolphins. I just I think Pickens would probably be more ideal, and then Williams is just a different type of animal who actually just went here to KC. So uh, we kind of played with the idea: what if he falls because of the ACL, won't be able to play like the first month or so of the season? Uh, and here he is going to Kansas City. I think, honestly, the edge position more vital in an edge deep class. Attack that, but they go, uh, they go uh, wide receiver. And then this is this is Zion Johnson. Yeah, no, nah, yeah, everyone's mocking Zion Johnson to the Bengals. I think, a hey, man, he, he, Bengals be fortunate if he made it to this pick. He's a great fit for Zach Taylor's offense. So, yeah, no, nah, this, this be a great pick. Detroit Lions, they go Jahan Dotson. They get a guy that could separate the field vertically, which is perfect. Force Jared Goff to take more of those downfield passes. All right, let's roll through. Round. Oh, wow. He actually wrote out a legit article about these guys. I expected just the list picks. Uh, Kyler Gordon. I mean, they have Griffin there, they have Tyson Campbell. I mean, grab it quarterback uh, depth, never the wrong answer. I think he's a sneaky, like, sneak into the first round type of guy just based on his size, his um, his athleticism. He showed off ball skills this year. So, yeah, no. Nah. Daxon Hill, Detroit needs a safety. Daxon Hill is the best one on the board. Uh, the Jets get Mija Sanders, who'd be a good fit. He's a good run stuffer. And it would fit that Joe Douglas, you know, hey, let's address the trenches. I thought Myja Sanders had a good showing. I wish I saw a bit more as a pass rusher. We did in the game, though. He was pretty uh, disruptive. My dog is barking at my other dog. Kingsley and Agbari, finally. Finally, someone as high on Kingsley and Agbari as me, and it's at 36. Uh, listen, I get it. There's more athletic edge rushers in this class, but Agbari, he's violent. He's, he's uh, lengthy. He's gonna. I think he's gonna translate well to the NFL. Giants. They need a dress pass rush. They get him here. Houston Texans. Roger McCreary. Listen, I'm telling y'all, length is gonna knock him into the second round. You just don't see guys deemed to slot corners go in the first round. You just don't. I know it's a starting position in the NFL. They just. It's it's one that doesn't go highly. Uh, they even played McCreary a little bit during practices in the slot. Uh, the 29-inch arms are going to be a tough sell. But, yeah, no, Houston Texans, just keep going B, uh, BPA. And then Trey McBride, they get their uh, their George Kittle. McBride, phenomenal, phenomenal run blocker. Shows enough as a receiver. 38 feels a bit rich, in my opinion. But I don't, like, I like Isaiah Likely a lot, but I... Uh, you get Trey McBride is easily the best tight end in this class, just more complete. Uh, David Bell instead of George Pickens. Oh, this is interesting. So they get Justin Fields, another uh, guy who is very good at the catch point, good body control, a lot of contested catches on tape, but what he can do after the catch is just nice. So cool. Cameron Thomas. I think Cameron Thomas hurt his stock this week. He doesn't seem like that tweener 
anymore, but he, I mean, he has played on the interior earlier in his career for the Aztecs. He did play uh, at about 260 on the interior for uh, San Diego State. So a guy that gives you a bit of versatility. Woo, let's see what the Seahawks do. Darian Kennard. He lists him here as a tackle, too. Listen, he, his day one at tackle was really good for the Senior Bowl, or at the Senior Bowl. And he just did not play well at guard. He's probably going to be a guard because I don't think he's athletic enough to stick out a tackle. He's still pretty sloppy with his hands and pass protection. But, I mean, for all intents and purposes, I think he's still probably a borderline top 50 player. And then we got the Comrags. They get a safety. Safety being probably their biggest need. Uh, some would argue linebacker on defense as well. Uh, but they grab uh, Jaquan Brisker. Jaquan Brisker uh, is not like a rangy safety, but he's a guy that will eat up everything underneath. He's a very savvy, very smart uh, safety. Won't allow himself to get beat. He showcased ball skills this year, and he's a sure tackler. Atlanta Falcons. Well, they get an edge in DeMarvin Leal. Do you know, I mean, hey, he fits the scheme. I like the fit. Like, months ago, this was who I was taking in the first round for Atlanta. A lot has happened since uh, drug arrest. We had the down part of the second half of the season for Leal when he was playing more interior. Looked like he put on a little bad weight, but no, I like this. All right, what else we got? Cleveland Browns. They get a very explosive, very lengthy edge rusher in Drake Jackson. Good pick. And then Devontae Wyatt. I think Wyatt will go a little higher than this. I thought he may have been one of the better perform or like best performer performers along the defensive line, not named Jermaine Johnson or Perry on Winfrey. Uh, who's still on the board, by the way? But uh, no, this would be a good fit, especially with uh, Khalil Campbell as a free agent. Minnesota Vikings, they do address the corner position here. Kyrie Elam, I don't get it. Kyrie Elam, not in the first round. Kind of blows my mind, but it's great value. The Colts, they go Desmond Ritter. This feels like this may have been, uh, this feels like this draft may have been designed. So Ritter falls here to the Colts. Uh, I thought Ritter was probably one of the better quarterbacks. I thought he looked better than Pickett and Strom throughout the week and even in the game. But uh, I get it, like, throughout his career, he's been wildly inaccurate at times. But Ritter's smart with the football. He doesn't make a lot of uh, turnover-worthy throws. He's got good mobility. So, yeah, no, this would be good for the Colts. Colts are in good position to pick up uh, any quarterback that falls at 47. Cars strong included. Let's see, Nicholas Petit Freer going to the Chargers. So they slide him over to right tackle because, I mean, Brian Bulaga can't stay healthy and Storm Norton is just terrible. So it'd be a good pickup. Feels a bit rich here at 48, though. And then Lewis Seen going to, a, I was about to say going to Georgia, going to the Saints. Marcus Williams is a free agent. Makes a ton of sense. Um, I'm curious where Jalen Pitry goes. I bring him up just because I think he's going to play slot in the NFL, but I bring him up just because uh, I'm probably going to have him ranked higher, but I do get that you're looking for a safety. Miami Dolphins, Bernhard Ryman. Uh, he had a decent week here at the Senior Bowl, and listen, Dolphins, um, George Pickens is on the board. Get receiving help for Tua. I mean, you keep investing in offensive line, and it's great value. It really is. It's great value. But you keep investing in offensive line, inexperience along the offensive line, and it's just going to hurt. Tua could make it his last year. It's kind of a make-or-break year for him. Christian Harris going to the Eagles. This is a bit different. This is a bit different. I mean, he's a guy you can blitz with. Like, uh, I don't recall how often the Eagles actually blitz their linebackers. But I like him in that uh, in that fold. He's a good run stuffer. I question what he does in coverage, though. Uh, Daniel Falalele going to the Pittsburgh Steelers. They can't ignore the mountain of a man at 6'8", 
387. Uh, he was getting bodied uh, at the Senior Bowl. Uh, he's a guy you cannot start right away, or at least you shouldn't. Uh, it'll just be to the detriment of your squad, but I do see the upside in him. Ooh, Travis Jones going to the uh, Raiders, getting some meat on the interior there. There you go. I got Travis Jones as a top 50 prospect. Here he is at 53, good value. Chad Buma going to the Patriots. I almost said Eagles. But, yeah, no, Muma looked good here at the Senior Bowl. He, I don't think he could be much of a blitzer, but what he could do in coverage, great athlete, sure tackler, sign me up. Arnold Ebiketti falling here to the Cardinals. Great value. Go ahead, snag it. We're going to see some good edge talent, like, fall down the board. So, especially with Chandler Jones possibly being a free agent, you also have... have um, uh, Golden, I think. I think he's a free agent. I might be wrong about that. Uh, Sean Ryan going to the Cowboys is pretty nice, though. Potentially could be your left tackle of the future. Or, at the at the very least, he comes in and he contests Connor Williams' spot. Well, Connor Williams is leaving via free agency, so maybe not. Perron Winfrey going to the Bills. Uh, Perron Winfrey showed that he can play the run, at least in a small sample size so that's good you know this guy's a ri the ridiculous upside of pass rush you like you like to see it oh john mechie going to the falcons john mechie i think is a guy definitely i got him in that midday two area uh, i think he he showed a lot of improvement this season uh in but I, I'm still like I still think he's a guy that gets bodied around the line against phys more physical corners. But dude's a separator, and they need more firepower in Atlanta. What does a running back come off the board? George Pickens, what a pick by the Packers! I would have taken him with the Dolphins' first pick. <sighs> Dang it, Isaiah Spiller, the first running back off the board. A lot of people like Isaiah Spiller. He's probably a top five running back uh, to me. Clo he's closer to five, uh, but it kind of blows my mind. Kenneth Walker isn't the pick here. So that's interesting. Uh, Jalen Pitcher would be a great pick for the Niners. Don't think he's going to last this long, though. And then we got Martin Emerson. They get a long uh, corner who's more adept to uh, zone concepts. I actually... He actually, uh, Jordan Reed mentions it here. Like, he, he, you run a, like, your understanding of zone concepts has to be legit. And I think it, the DC there at Mississippi State is David Arnett. I could be wrong. Uh, I could be getting the name wrong, but yeah. So, like, like, Emerson be a solid pick if that's what they're looking to do. Um, a bit more often. I know that they, they've in the past been a more man coverage team. So and then we got Tariq Wolin. Ooh, this actually, I think you, you flip these picks. I really do. I think, uh, Martin Emerson's a better fit for Cincy and Wolin's a better fit for, um, who was the team I just talked about? I could scroll up, but no, I want to remember. Ah, shucks. Oh, the Chiefs. But uh, Tariq Wolin, I think he impressed in terms of the guy is built. He's got great length. He bodied guys at the line of scrimmage. But he's not a, not someone you're going to want to play in off coverage. But, nah, dude, he is a good, like, developmental guy. He's got a lot of traits. Carson Strong. Going to Denver. Just the gimme here. Just the gimme. Oh, man. Carson Strong. So you get your quarterback of the future. Congratulations, Denver. This was an interesting mock. Uh, I feel like a few things were rigged, like uh, Ritter to the Colts. But overall, it showcased a lot of different guys. I really disagree about first run back off the board. Spiller's like running back four or five for me. And I actually like Spiller. But I just think Brees Hall, Kenneth Walker. I like Jermaine Ford, Damian Pierce. I just I think I'd take those guys instead. I feel like Pickens fell really far. But overall, uh, let me know what you think in the comment section below. That's it for the video. Go ahead, do that YouTube thing. As always, until next time, 
You be easy, my friends. Later.